Right, hello and welcome to the fourth instalment, I believe, of our review of the new Necron Codex. I'm joined yet again by Miles Wilson. Hello. You guys know the drill, so without further ado, we're going to dive on in. Except I do tell a lie, there is one thing we do want to acknowledge. On the last review, we said that the Ghost Arc, because it's Salvo 510 you're going to be firing 10 shots most of the time from the salvo weapon because it's relentless because of the detachment. And a few people pointed out, well, vehicles are relentless. That is true, but we were both agreeing that it's relentless. We are just agreeing it was relentless for different reasons, so there's a bit of a technicality there. But yes, you guys in the comments are right, so consider yourselves, give yourselves a pat on the back for that. Anyway, we're going to dive straight on in. So first of all, the first elite joint is the Lich Guard. Um, and I believe they've got a lot cheaper than the last book, if I remember correctly. They're now 25 points, so 125 points for five of them, and you're getting a pretty pretty nice stat line there. They are equipped with war scythes, so they're going to be strength 7, AP 2, they're T5, they have a 3 up save, you know, 4 up uh, reanimation probably. And uh, yeah, you can also upgrade them to have hyperphase hyper swords and dispersion shields, which is basically giving them a power sword and a free up invon save. So they have a free up armor, free up invon, and a four up re resurrection and power swords. There's, so there's nothing wrong with these guys, and for twenty five points, they're a bargain. Like yeah, I can't think of any a space room veteran with the same upgrades. Much more expensive. Think of a space room veteran coming in at about eighteen points yeah. per person then giving them a power sword for another 15 points. The thing that sucks though is I believe the um, the dispersion shields, they can't gain an extra attack for it's weapons. It's basically a storm shield. Yeah, um, but you, so you're going to get three attacks on the charge if you do that, which is still good. Um, weapon skill four kind of sucks. It'd be better if they're hitting on threes, but then T5 and strength five is solid as hell. Mm. So, uh, Init yeah. Initiative um, is a problem as well for assaulting. But they're very survivable. So yeah, they've got the ability to tank damage because mm. if you give them dispersion seals, free up armor, free up invul, and then a four up resurrection, they're they're not going to go down easy. So the fact that they have to survive shots on the way in, the fact you know the T five as well for Christ's sake, mm. the fact they have to survive shots on the way in, they have to have to survive the enemy hitting first normally. It's really not that big a problem. It's, it'd be mm. better if they had better initiative, but it's not you know. And with leadership ten, I'm most likely be accompanied by a warlord. You know, of you know, an overlord or something. You've you've got a very powerful shock unit, and they can be taken night scythe as a dedicated transport. So yeah, that's the other problem I was going to say. They are quite slow. They are only infantry, but if you take a night scythe, you can zip them across the table, mm. get them where you need to go. So that's pretty good. Um, I guess the question then before we move on is night scythe, um, or sorry, war scythe, or um, face swords and dispersion shields. Yeah, it's a five point upgrade for the sword and shield. Um, it makes them more survivable. Yeah. It makes them weaker in close combat. Um, mm. I'd personally say the War Scythe is probably the better bet. Because, you see, I think I'd go with the Hyperphase Swords, because they're more expensive, but then a free up Invon save is tasty. Very good, and yeah. the, like, I mean, they're Strength 5 anyway. Strength seven's great, sure, but Strength 5 anyway is pretty good. And more often than... I mean, like, if you go up against Terminators and stuff, obviously War Scythe's all day long, they're great. But against most things, I think the... Sort of do better, and it makes them more survivable. So I, I don't know. I think there's a case you made for both of them, but it depends on your points, really. Like, yeah. It depends. You know, it's it's only five points, so it's quite good. Um, your offensive capacity is slightly worse, but your defensive capacity is but significantly. Overall, worse. we like these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very good choice. Yeah, I think they're quite cool. Uh, Death marks. I believe they've got worse. If most yeah, people they... seem to, you know. They, didn't they get more expensive or something? Like They're 90 points for 5, so they're 18 points a model, um, yeah. which uh, isn't too bad. 24-inch range is quite poor, though. Um, yeah. They've got a warrior stat line, basically, but a free up, it, free up armor save. And they've got sniper rifles, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so you know, you're know wounding on 4s. They're, they're a bit better than a normal sniper rifle, though, aren't they? They've got, yeah, um, they've got... First of all, they're rapid fire. Yeah, they're synaptic disintegrator, 24-inch range, strength... X, um, AP5, Rapid Fire, Sniper. So that's pretty good. And so, then um, I also liked one of their special rules. Uh, your Hunters from Hyperspace, uh, during the player turn in which they ride from Deep Strike, because you can Deep Strike them, which is also cool, all shooting attached made by the Death Marks um, in this will wound on a 2+, plus, regardless of the victim's toughness. So, so think yeah. about that for a second. Think about 
the enemy Riptide. It's chilling in the back, it's, you know, troll-facing you with all its ridiculous weapons. You deep strike these guys in, they're going to be hitting on threes, you're rapid-firing if you're close to them. 10, 15, 20 shots, perhaps. Yeah, and then wounding on twos. You're going to do some damage, yeah. you know, that wounding on twos is good. And, and then the other special rule is ethereal interception. Which oh, basically... It's not an anti tower thing. <laughs> it basically, what it means is uh, if someone else deep strike, if your opponent deep strikes, then you can deep strike in as well. At uh, the same time, yeah. That's, that's quite cool. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's it makes them more likely to arrive, An interesting it? counter to the deep strike. But yeah, overall, not the best choice in the book, but they're okay. You know, Death Mark, I think they're going to be good against, um, you know, stuff like, I'll say... Riptides. Riptides. Because well. the worst you're going to be doing is wounding on a four against Riptides and that. Mm. Uh, the best you're going to be doing is wounding on twos if you deep strike. So Riptides and uh, monstrous, monstrous creatures, creatures and stuff like that, they're pretty good choice. But probably, I think there's better stuff to take than Deathmark. So mm. a lukewarm review. And then Flayed Ones. Flayed Ones are friggin' awesome. <laughs> I absolutely love them. They're a great unit. They're um, 13 points a pop, so same as a warrior, so 65 points for five of them. Weapon skill four, but skill one, basically because... They can't use their hands. I think the whole point of that yeah. is to stop them from basically manning a gun in the back lines or something. Yeah, which would be ridiculous. Yeah. That's not what they're for. Uh, three attacks, and they've got two close combat weapons. Yeah. Uh, two flare claws, which are pretty interesting because their strength is a AP5 meter. I'm, I'm going to be honest here, and it hurts It hurts me to say this because I think they're a fantastic looking unit. I mean, we're looking at them there, you know, wearing the skin of their. You know, they look so cool. Dragging a half a corpse. It's yeah, exactly. You know, this guy's got like a. You know, skulls around it. They look great. And the fluff is really cool. And also, you know, two flare claws. So they're going to have five attacks on the charge and shred. So we're wrong to hit. So you think maybe they could be okay. But the problem is only a four up armor and also uh, deep strike. So you're probably, yeah. you're probably yeah. going to deep strike them in. They're going to get shot. They're going to die. And that's going to be the end of it. I don't see how you're going to get. If you can get them into combat, fair enough. But I just don't really see them working that well. But having said that, for fluff purposes, I think they're so cool that I would probably, if I played Necrons, maybe try and fit a squad in just because they're cool. You yeah, know? They're, they're cheap. They and they're not they're not yeah. completely terrible. I mean, if you actually do get them into combat, you know they're going to be getting five attacks with shred, so that's that's okay. But <laughs> one of their main drawbacks, once again, initiative two uh, for a close combat unit, that's not great. Yeah, especially when, like I say, you consider the fact that like they're going to have to deep strike in or you're going to infiltrate them. They'll move up or they'll deep strike in. They'll just get shot in the face by Tau and die. You know, a four up, four up is good, but it's not, you know. By, four, by, by the way, by four up, four up, I mean four up armor, four up reanimation, not four up invulnerable, if anyone was confused. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they got fear, I guess, which, as we've discussed before, it's not that amazing. Like, so many things are fearless or have they shown any fear, but let's not spend too much time with them. They're, they're, they're fun. They're cool, but they're not that great. For 65 points, you know. You yeah, only, si only 65 wrong. points, so it's not, you know, they're not like they're horribly overcosted. And then we have Praetorians. Yeah, try out Praetorians. Um, so a Roman name in a Egyptian themed coat, yeah. Yeah, yeah the Triarch, the you know, Triarch. Um, for 140 points, you get five of them, so 28 points a pop. So more expensive. More expensive than a Lich Guard. Yeah, well, that's what we're comparing them to a Lich Guard. And the only difference in, there's no difference in stats, but they're jump infantry. And their war gets different. Um, they also have fearless, which I no nope, immortal. Um, not lich guy don't have fearless, so they're going to stick around for a lot longer. Um, Royal of the Covenant, very very good weapon. It's um, it's a ranged weapon and a close combat weapon. It's strength five, mm -hmm. uh, AP two on the oh okay uh, on the um, assault one, uh, but it only has twelve inch range, which is better than it used to be. And yeah. in um, close combat, they're going to be strength user, so strength against strength five, AP two, melee two handed. Oh, AP two. Oh, okay, that is good. So this this codex has quite a lot of AP two in it. I'm liking that. I mean, that is one of the things I think I you struggle with with marines. I mean, with marines, yeah. it's sort of the only AP two things you get is like thunder hammers or you know power fists. But then I guess the trade off is although you're getting a lot of good AP two stuff in this codex, you're also bad initiative. So it's kind of you know. But free up armor and a free up. A four up um, reanimation protocol, you're, yeah. you're going to survive. Um, plus the jump from tree, so they're going to get a strength five um, hammer of rough hit, which isn't bad. You can take void blades. Yeah, um, void blades and password casters for free. Um, password caster, quite quite a cool weapon. It's a pistol, the only pistol in the book. Okay. Um, so they will get an extra attack if they do this. So they'll get three attacks at base and four attacks on a charge. All strength right, six, nice. AP five, pistol, 12 inch range. 
And strength in, 6 is not bad. And in close combat, it, the Void Blade is strength user, AP4, melee, entropic strike, rending. So, so rending's good because that means on your 6s you'll be yeah. AP2 instead of AP4. And entropic strike basically means you roll a 6 to wound, you'll wound anything. Yeah. So, My only fear here yeah. is, yeah. although I think what you're paying for, because they're, um, they're what? Well, three points more expensive than a Lich God. Lich God. Yeah. What you're paying for is a jump pack, and a jump pack in the uh, in the Blood Angel Codex is three points. So basically, you're getting jump pack Lich God, essentially. Yeah. Um, slightly different, of course. They've got you know slightly it's different a rules. range option though. So they um they they can be they're a bit more flexible, I think. Um, no, I think you'll be able to use these guys. You know, um, and not you- not necessarily you want to fill your army with these guys, but you know, there's definitely. Definitely things you can do with them. And you can take a Night Scythe for them. So you drop them out of a Night Scythe, they fire off, you know, up. You can take 10 of them in a squad, fire off 10 AP5, um, a strength 5 AP2 hits. It's quite nasty. Yeah. Then Assault, obviously, um, the next turn, comes in. It, it's quite good at riping squads. So for 140 points, 140 points, same cost as, you know. Yeah, I mean, they're all right. They're all right. right. Every, everything so far has been at least all right. Um, some some of it's been good, some of it's been okay. But next up we have a Triarch Stalker. Now, if I've played against them before, and if I remember, what they do is mainly give like twin link to everything around them. They're sort of a buffing unit. Is that right? Um, um, this time round, it's targeting relay um, plus one to ballistic skill within all non-vehicle units with Necron faction within six inches. So stick it in the middle of a gun line, and your mortals, your warriors are going to be hitting on two. So everything six is plus one ballistic skill. That's really yeah. good because I. I th- think it used to be something like if it fired at a target everything else firing at that target was twin linked I think something similar. I, I've said before in this review I'm not a Necron player so I, I don't quote me on that but yeah they're quite good um, stat and you can lines, take them in a uh, squad a squadron yeah 1 to 3 20, 125 points each cool um, weapon ballistic skill 4 so pretty decent strength 7 11 all round but they've got quantum shielding mm-hmm. um, initiative 2 so for a walker that's not great but they're survivable. Um, it's three attacks and three hull points. Um, and uh, heat ray. What does a heat ray? Heat do? ray is it's a mixed bag. Um, there's two modes to fire it: template, strength five, AP four, heavy one, um, or focus, twenty four inches, strength eight, AP one, heavy two, melter. So it can pop tanks and can get rid of quality infantry. Sounds interesting. Um, but you can upgrade it with two uh, um, two options: um, particle shredder, which is Quite, it's quite a strong option. Um, 24 inch range, strength 7, AP4, heavy 1, large blast. Okay, so a large blast. Yeah, that's good. That'd be, I mean, that'd be good against swords. I mean, yeah. the, the, we were, uh, me and Miles were talking about lists earlier, and we were sort of saying the fact that, you know, um, there's so much good anti armor. You know, even if even your dirt troops, your warriors, they can take on land raiders with just their bolters. So there's so much anti armor. You know, it's good to have some blast templates for anti horde. Mm. A strength seven large blast AP four. That's going to destroy orcs and stuff like that. Mm. So you know, that's a that's a reasonable thing to say because you have so much anti armor in your set. You know, so, um, um, the other option for weaponry to replace the heat ray is a twin linked heavy gauze cannon. Now that is some serious firepower. 36 inches range, uh, strength 9, AP2, heavy 1, gauze. So it's a last cannon. A yeah. last cannon with slightly worse range. Yeah, and but gauze. I, <laughs> but hey, I like twin-linked last cannons. So. Yeah. And it, it's nasty, it's nasty. Um, once again, there's lots of anti-armour, and that is a very strong anti-armour, but it's 36 inch range, and considering quite a lot of Necron weapons are 24 inches, it is very, very... A very, very valid choice to take. Okay, and then we're almost finished, I believe, because the only thing we've got to talk about is Shard of the Nightbringer and Shard of the Deceiver. Now, I have played against both of these guys. I actually played against the Nightbringer when the Necron first codex came out, and he wasn't a Shard, he was the Nightbringer. Yeah. And he was way more expensive, but he also was a bit of a bit of a beast, and then they nerfed the hell out of them and made them Shards, and mm. I don't see many people taking them anymore, but hey, what's changed? What, are, what, are, well, the, what have we got now? The fluff has changed completely. The then- the Nightbringer and the Deceiver used to rule the Necrons, now they're their slaves, but very unwilling slaves. Um, the Nightbringer is a very strong close combat unit. Uh, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 4, strength 7, toughness 7, 4 wounds, initiative 4, 4 attacks, leisure 10, and a 4 up invol against pretty much anything. In fact, against anything because it's a 4 up invol. Um, and if it gets killed. Yeah, it's, well, first of all, it has a 4 up invol save. Which is kind of lame because, mm. 
your T7, your T7, that's that's good. I'm not going to argue the T7, but... Four wounds is pretty decent as well. Four wounds is okay, but you've only got a four up in Von. Yeah. So I can see you not being that... I mean, like... I'm seeing let's, Twin let's, Devourers taking Let's say Twin Link Devourers, you're wounding on fives with Twin Link Devourers, but you inflict a couple of wounds, so you've only got a 50-50 chance of saving them. Mm. So I can see them going... I, I, and 250, 240 points for something that's only got a four up save. Yeah. You it's, know, it's not that... I mean, like, the, what you're relying on is T7... But, I don't know. And then, Powers of the Catan is what they're... Um... Yeah, Powers of the Catan is, is interesting. It is, um, there's two different profiles for it. Um, one is the profile for the, the Nightbringer, the Deceiver, the Transcendent Catan. Um, and one is the Coalescent, which is the um, the big... Whatever you call it. The, uh, the, um, the Super Monolith. The Tesseract Vault. The Tesseract Vault, which is 550 points and it's a Lord of War. And a super heavy. Um, there's six different options, and depending on what you, what um, you're targeting, it depends on which ones you want to use. But unfortunately, unlike a psychic power where you roll to see what power you get and you choose your target, this time around you have to choose a target and then roll to see what you power you get. So it's useless then. No. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, if you target something and, <laughs> and you, need, you, you need it to be good and then you roll a dice and you get the you wrong... Get, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not into that at all. It's it's unfortunate wording and unfortunate um, decision, but there's no negatives in the sense there's no powers of the war for anything. Yeah. Um, I think the safest bet against if you're targeting with the Catan is against things like monstrous creatures. If you're targeting a vehicle, a high armored vehicle... There's a yeah, one in I mean, three chance you're going to get something good against it. Um, you're targeting um, horde infantry. There's a one in three chance you're going to get something good against it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking. Stuff, I'm looking at these things, and some of these are, you know, um, monstrous strength <laughs> six AP four, and then others are strength nine AP one. If you want to be shooting something and you want your strength nine AP one weapon, you don't want to end up getting a strength. Yeah. But you know. It, I'm not into this at all. I think, um, I think if you're going to take a time... I mean, for purposes of fun, I'll say this is a really good laugh. If you're in a casual game, you know, you've got this big beast, monstrous creature, Catan Shard, you know, it's got some cool special rules, it can roll and do some crazy thing. It's kind of cool, but at the same time, if you want to be competitive, I would say definitely don't bother with the Catan. I would, I would not say it's competitive at all. Um, 240 points, you've only got a 4 up uh, invulnerable save, so they're going to, you know, if, if you, how annoying is it going to be when someone shoots a heavy bolter at it, you take one wound and uh, then you roll a 2 or a 1 or a 3, you know, yeah. and then you, it, it's it's not that great. And then the fact you're rolling and getting random things each time, I'm not, in, I, I don't like these. I'm, I, for purposes of fun, go ahead and take these guys, but if you want to, you know, there's better things to take, really. Um, I'm not a fan. Yeah, I think the best way to take them is to take them in a Tesseract Vault because you get increased range and everything kind of gets larger and more powerful. Yeah, but we'll be talking about the transcend, uh, Transcendent Catan. Also, I heard people talking like Satan or like Catan or it's, Satan. It's Catan. I believe it's uh, a hard K, like the Greek K. Yeah, well, I guess how you pronounce it. But, yeah, anyway. We'll be talking about, you know, the Tesseract Vault in the Lords of War. We'll be talking about the Transcendent Cat uh, Catan or Satan or however you want to call it in uh, a, a later part. But uh, we're going to wrap this up for now. So um, Yeah, there's not much difference between the, um, the Nightbringer and the Deceiver. They've got some different special rules. Um... The Deceiver has a better ballistic skill, but a worse weapon skill. Um, there's just some, like, Deceiver has hit and run, whilst yeah. Nightbringer has Fleshbane. Um, days of I death mean, for the I mean, although I was criticising their... Um, their... Um, Survivability. Well, not that's that, but their powers. Mm. That is just their shooting. I mean, if you do get them into combat, they're still a strength 7 monstrous creature. Mm. You know, with... Five attacks on the charge. They're still okay, but I just don't think they're survivable. And I... There is something very interesting about the Nightbringer, though. Um, it has a special rule called Gaze of Death. In the shooting phase, in addition to one of the powers, this model can target one non vehicle enemy unit within 12 inches, so quite short range with, with, for which it has a line of sight. The unit suffers a number of wounds. This is the unit itself, not a, a single yeah. model. Uh, equal to 3d6 minus its leadership, resolved at AP2 and with the Ignore's cover special rule. If at least one unsaved wound is inflicted, the Catan Shard of the Nightbringer immediately regains one wound lost earlier in the battle. Yeah, that's pretty good, because um, 
I mean, what's the? It's only twelve inch range, isn't it? But once you get it close enough, then it yeah, yeah, but uh, you won't get it close enough because you'll yeah. be killed. You know, sniper rifles will be dead, like yeah. deadly to this. Because you fire sniper rifles at them, they wound on a four. You take like three wounds, then you're gonna, you know, four up saves. It's only fifty percent chance. Gonna so. be a, it's gonna be a case of but, if your opponent knows how to deal with them, they're yeah. gonna die. And for such a big point sink. And then they both have, I don't think we've mentioned, sorry, they both have immune to nature's law, which means they ignore, you know, terrain and stuff. Yeah. Um, just, and if uh, they get destroyed, they blow up quite disastrously. Oh, yeah, they, well, yeah, we mentioned that. I don't know if we mentioned that. If they do get destroyed, there's a blast around them. It's, well, no, it's not a blast, it's, it's you roll a d6, and that's yeah. how. So that can be bad as well, especially if you've got them in the middle of your horde and they die on the next, but, you know. Um, Deceiver is dread, which is minus two to um, leadership yeah. around. And causing uh, fearless, so... Uh, yeah, they have a ton of warriors, so they can't be instant death. And then I guess the last thing we haven't mentioned before we wrap up this video is Grand Illusion. Uh, immediately after all forces have deployed and all scout um, redeployments have been made, you may remove this model and up to D3 other friendly units and within 12 of it off the table. Each unit uh, removed in this manner can either be immediately deployed against. Again, using the normal deployment rules or placing reserve. So it gets you a little redeploy. Yeah, so that's one of the tricks that you can do. It, it can it, it can bugger up your opponent's uh, deployment. Yeah, I mean but that's a, that's okay. That's though. okay. But it's not that great. Yeah. So overall, I'm I would say that I'm not a fan of either of these. I think they're not that survivable. Even though they've got T7, you know they will go down. Um, and also, I don't like the randomness of what you're shooting. But they're fun and they're not. They're not horrible. I mean, they're still a, at the end of the day, they're still a strength seven monstrous creature, so they're still okay. But you know, I don't. They're not worth their points at all. I don't think there's a place for them within a two thousand point list. Um, yeah. Within a two thousand five hundred point list, you might be able to sneak one in. Uh, if you're if you're quite feeling quite dickish, you could put one in a thousand point list, and it it might be a bit too much for someone to handle. But there, there's there's certainly better ways for you to fill out a thousand point list to yeah. a competitive standard. Anyway, that is it for the Elites, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you tune in next time. Make sure you leave a like if you've enjoyed it. And be sure to subscribe if you're new to our channel. So that's bye from me. Goodbye. And bye from Miles Wilson. <laughs>